All right, this section we're going to be talking about risk and the required rates of return on those specific investments. Now, previously we had seen this equation right here, which, right, which says that the required return R on the J security is equal to that risk-free rate, right? And we know that risk-free rate is given by U.S. Treasuries, okay? So the reason we call those risk-free, right, is because we know there's, there's no default risk on them. The federal government is going to be able to pay those back. They're essentially the lowest risk uh, investments out there, okay? And then we have this premium for risk, right, which this here is our compensation, okay? And that risk premium is, is really what we're going to be going into today and, and how we actually figure out what this compensation number is and how it goes into that figure out there, okay? So that, that's our, our discussion today, okay? The way we're going to do this is surrounding a probability distribution. Now, a probability distribution is one in which it, it tells us basically it's our standard bell-shaped curve, right, where we have a, uh, a near infinite number of outcomes, right? But when we talk about this probability distribution is that there really is, uh, we can simplify it a lot and we can basically pull it down to being two events, right? We only have two events here. We can basically say that it's going to rain or it's not going to rain, right? There, those are some mutually exclusive conditions, okay? And if we're looking at this probability is that we're going to assign a probability, given this amount right here, which is that 0 0.35, 0 0.65. Of course, naturally, if we take that 0.35 and we turn it into a percentage, it's going to be 35%. That 0.65 is going to be 65%. Now, whenever we're doing this probability distribution, regardless of the number of outcomes that we have, okay, is that all of these must always sum to 1. Okay, so 0 0.35, 0 0.65 is 1. Or when you put it in percentage terms, it's going to be at 100%. Okay? Now, this is one of those things that's always gotten me uh, kind of frustrated, I guess, is when people are like, oh, give it 110%. Well, you know, that's... I take some issues with that, right? Because there's no possible way that we're able to give 110%. Okay? If, you know, there's only 100% effort that we can put into any job at any point in time. Okay? Now, the way we can discuss this a little bit is, is if we are talking about, you know, the amount that I give to my job, right? I give 90% to my job. It means I'm putting 10% somewhere else, whether that's, you know, checking Facebook or, um, you know, sleeping at my job or whatever it is. Everything always has to add up to one. That's the most important part here. Everything has to add up to one. Now we're going to open this up just a, just a little bit and just into the relevance for a stock, okay? Now we're going to expand this out into being three different states. Okay, now if we look at this is that we're going to assess a probability to each of these states. Right? We have a boom state, a normal state, and a recession state. Naturally, we can have a big boom, a smaller boom, you know, there's a whole variety in there, but we can simplify it to being just these three different states. Okay, then we also look at our probability of occurrence. Okay, so we look at, we have a 0.3 probability of a boom occurring, 0.45 of normal, and 0.25 of a recession. Okay? Now, what you'll notice is that all of these add up to 1. Okay? That's, that's the first thing we notice. They all add up to 1. Okay? Now, what we're doing here is that we have these three probabilities. Okay? And then uh, next to those probabilities is that we're going to be looking at two different companies. Right? Their first company over here, Dane Creek Distillery, uh, and then we have Outlier Education Services. Now, Dane Creek Distillery, right? we say that they have a 75% Return. These are these are return figures. Okay, these are the returns that are underneath um, on, on on each of these on Outlier Education or Dane Creek Distillery. Is that this is the return that we would gain from this company? So our expected return from the company if this situation occurs. If there's a boom, we'll have a 75% return at Dane Creek Distillery, and if there's versus 25, excuse me, 20% in Outlier Education Services. Okay. Now, where we can take this, okay, and, and the reason we're looking at this is that we want to look at this and say, which of these stocks should we buy? And what is an okay price for them? Okay? Uh, and, is that looking at these, is that we want to know, hey, which of these is going to be riskier? Okay? How do I come up with what my dollar value is on my compensation? Okay? Because we don't have... You know, just looking at this, we're like, oh, we need to figure out exactly what our compensation is going to be.